Welcome into the Steelers Talk Mailbag. I am your host, Jack Sperry, and today we're going to be talking about all the different topics you want me to talk about. I love these segments, and I love doing them every single week because you guys tell me what topics you want me to discuss, what questions you have uh, after the week of content that we've had here on Steelers Talk. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want to get a question on a future Steelers Talk mailbag, we go live usually every Monday and every Thursday, and we do our mailbags on the on the Thursday live show. So if you guys want to get a question on a future edition of Steelers Talk, uh, make sure you guys click that subscribe button, and then also join us at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays to get your question on the show. Okay, I'll pause and open it up for questions here, starting with a $5 super chat from Gary Frank, who says, will Steelers regret not taking Najee's option next year? So I understand why the Steelers declined his option. Uh, it was a pretty expensive option, uh, especially for the running back position. So um, I understand why they declined it. They wanted the optionality of this offseason. Like if he didn't have a good season this year, they wanted the ability to just get rid of him. Um, and, and start over and not have to pay him a big contract. Um, but they also have the optionality here to just franchise tag him for, I mean, it's actually pretty close to what it would have been his fifth-year option if they franchise tag him. So I honestly think it was a smart move by GM Omar Khan. There's a lot of people, including myself, that uh, were expecting them to take on the fifth-year option because he was a first-round first, first round pick, and he's a crucial part of this offense. But I see why they did it, and at the end of the day, I do think Najee, especially if he keeps playing, uh, at a high level, is going to remain a Pittsburgh Steeler through next season. Got one from Pickens Burner here. He says, how should Steelers use Cordero Patterson in this offense? Kind of hard to split snaps between three running backs efficiently. And the answer to that question, Pickens, is that Patterson's just going to get fewer snaps. And he's going to get fewer uh, reps, plain and simply. And, you know, you can use him a little bit as a bigger slot receiver if you want. They did that a little bit um, earlier in the year. But, honestly, Patterson is more of a depth piece at this point. Now, you know, people might point to some nice runs he had against the Colts and say he should be getting a bigger role, and that's fair enough. But I think that when you look at Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, what they provide for this offense, it's just a higher level of play um, over a longer period of time than what Cordero Patterson's going to be able to give you. Uh, plus, there's a lot more tread on Patterson's tires than the other two guys. So I think Patterson is a really good depth piece to have. You get him in there in the third guy in the rotation, get him a couple uh, snaps a game. And if there's an injury, you know, he can step in and be a really reliable number two back. Um, but, you know, what he, he is what he is, and what he is is depth at this point in the season. Then we on for Brian Hagan. What's up, Brian? Says, what is up with Roman Wilson? He, I believe it was a hamstring injury um, he got a couple weeks ago. He was put on IR. And honestly, Brian, I wouldn't expect to see Roman the rest of the season. Um, you know, I don't think this is an injury that's necessarily – uh, like a season ender where like he has to miss the rest of the year. I think it's just like he's missed so much time at this point. They want to make sure he's healthy for the future. Um, it's looking more like a, a, a freshman redshirt season type deal like it was with Calvin Austin the third and Corey Trice Jr. Um, they're hoping that Roman, after a good offseason um, this summer, can come back into the fall um, and really be a good player for this offense next year. So take a guess here. Will Roman Wilson play another game for Pittsburgh this year? Yes or no? I think that he's going to be healthy enough to play at some point this year, but especially with the addition of Mike Williams, I just don't know if Roman's going to get a helmet again this year, guys. Uh, we'll see if I'm wrong on that. This will be the pinned comment on today's show. So YouTube's going to throw you guys an ad break in just a second. When that happens, give me a yes or no. Will Roman Wilson play another game in a Steelers uniform this season? Got a $2 super chat from my man Zox. Says, final score predictions for Sunday's game. Coop, if you want to come on here and give your a score prediction. For me personally, guys, I'm going to go. It's a little bit lower scoring than I think some people are expecting. I'm going to pick 23-20 Steelers win. Coop, what do you got? I'm going to go 27-20. to I think the Steelers, once again, lead a game-winning drive in the fourth quarter. Russell Wilson does it again. Absolutely. Fourth quarter, Russ. It's absolutely a real thing, man. I was watching the film last week against the Commanders. Once the fourth quarter came around, all of a sudden, Russell Wilson turned it up to a whole nother level. So love to have that type of quarterback in the Steel City. Next question coming in from Brock Walker. What's up, Brock? Good to see you. He says, uh, can we keep up the consistency in the second half of the season or will Mike Tomlin find a way to just go over 400 or 500? 
um, you know, I think that the consistency will be there. And I think that, you know, this is a Steelers team where, like, it's not going to, you know, let's face it, the second half of the season is a gauntlet, all right? I know that the Browns and Bengals aren't as good as maybe the expectations were heading into the year, but these AFC North games, they're physical. It's going to be a tough schedule, all right? It's going to get the Steelers ready for the postseason. If the Steelers just win three more games the rest of the year, guys, they're at 10 wins, and that's going to be enough to get you to the postseason. So I think that the Steelers will get to at least 11 or 12 wins this year. I think they'll win four or five of their final uh, you know, whatever is left on the schedule. And I think that they will be sitting in a very good spot to potentially win the AFC North this year. And I think that they are absolutely a team that not only, not only can win one game in the postseason this year, but I think they can win multiple games and go on a legit postseason run that could end potentially in a seventh Lombardi trophy for our Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, before we get to the rest of your questions today, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Prize Picks, which is the best place to get real money sports action all on your phone this sports season. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. Prize Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. How great is that? Prize Picks puts their members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. Also, Prize Picks now offers Venmo for quick and easy deposits and withdrawals into your account this sports season. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Where each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value for your lineups. And it's more than just football this year, guys. It's it's basketball. It's hockey. Uh, even when NASCAR's around, you can do NASCAR. And there, you can also put projections in on the big fights that are happening around uh, the fighting schedule. So download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. That's $50 instantly when you use code CLNS after playing your first $5 lineup on the Prize Picks app today. Prize Picks, run your game. Next question coming in from Christian Andujar says, Hey, Jack, what do you think Steelers are going to do this offseason with Fields and Russ? Who's getting re signed? Um, right now, I mean, based on the way that these guys have played and who's starting right now, it's going to be Russell Wilson, okay? And it's going to be another at least two-year contract. And, you know, will he take a hometown discount here uh, to kind of allow for the Steelers to keep more of their talent on defense? Um, we'll see. I know that right now Russ is more focused on legacy than he is about getting paid. He's already been paid hundreds of millions of dollars. His wife... Um, uh, Sierra obviously makes a lot of money as a global superstar, um, and they, they have a lot of money. Let's put it that way, okay? What Russ wants is to feel the quote-unquote chill of the trophy, as he likes to say. He wants to win Super Bowls and solidify his legacy as not only a Hall of Famer, but one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. That's what he's focused on right now, um, and if he keeps it up and he plays this well the rest of the season – um, the Steelers are going to bring him back because they're trying to win now. They're not going to bring back Justin Fields because with Fields, they were a team that was like a playoff contender but not a Super Bowl contender, probably out in the first round. I think with Russell Wilson, uh, this offense has gone to another level, so you got to stick with the guy uh, that's the higher uh, performer at this point to try and win as many Super Bowls as you can in this era. Hey, we got a $50 super chat from King Yinzer. Anthony Fuller. Anthony, we are not worthy. Thank you so much. Uh, for all of your support, my friend. And by the way, with the Salute to Service Month here, um, thank you for your service, Anthony Fuller, for your service to our country. Um, I appreciate your support for our channel and, of course, the service you've provided for the United States of America. Okay, now we get to Lucas Skew here, who says, do you think Beanie Bishop Jr. should be the starting cornerback? So I think he's asking, should he be the starting slot corner over Cam Sutton? Honestly, it sounds like Mike Tomlin is going to uh, continue to play Cam Sutton more and more and more. He talked about expanding his role uh, in the Steelers' defense in his weekly press conference. So I thought Cam Sutton actually didn't play all that well uh, against the Commanders. He gave up multiple uh, – he got toasted multiple times. I don't think the long speed is there anymore for Cam. Um, so honestly, right now, I prefer Beanie Bishop Jr. based on what I saw on Cam Sutton's film last week. Um, but I certainly understand why they want the veteran presence of Sutton in the lineup. Then we got one from my man George Pickensburg. says, if we beat the Ravens, are the Steelers arguably the best team in the entire NFL? Honestly, um, so they're in the mix is what I'll say, George Pickensburg. You know, um, 
the way that the NFL works is that there's like a bubble of teams, right? Six or seven teams that really have a good legitimate shot at making a run for a championship. And then there's like three or four teams that could be like a dark horse or, you know, if they get hot or, you know, whatever the case may be, they could maybe make a run, but probably aren't legit contenders. I think the Steelers are absolutely in that bubble of six to seven teams in the NFL with a legitimate chance to win. And honestly, at that point, man, it's a one and done playoff structure, right? Anything can happen. And, you know, you just got to hope that the that the breaks fall your way, that you play well enough, that the coaching has you prepared, uh, that the players are, are able to execute, especially in the biggest moments in the fourth quarter. But absolutely, George Pickensburg, uh, I think that this team is certainly up there with the best teams in the NFL. And I think they have, at, at least standing right, right here right now, I think they got a legitimate chance to hoist a Lombardi Trophy this season. So if you guys all want to click that thumbs up icon uh, right now, I really do appreciate all of your guys' support. It really does help out the video. Um, and it's a free and easy way to help out the show. So the real ones know clicking that thumbs up icon is the best way to support the channel on every single video you watch. So what are you waiting for? Help us out today and click that thumbs up icon. Got another $5 super chat from my man Gary Frank. Says, rumor has it Nick Chubb may be available next year. It's this someone Steelers, uh, is this someone the Steelers should go after? Now, if they, if they let go of Najee Harris... Then yeah, you know, if Nick Chubb becomes available, I'm not sure the specifics on Chubb's contract. Is he a free agent? I'm not too sure. Um, but you know, he's somebody that's that's had multiple injuries. Uh, he is a power back, so he could be a, like he could fit nicely in terms of his role uh, if if the Steelers want to get rid of Najee Harris. Um, but honestly, I think the Steelers are just going to keep Najee. I think they're probably going to franchise tag him. Um, especially if he keeps playing well for the rest of the year. And honestly, the Steelers got a good thing right now, man. Like They got a good engine in the run game with Najee and Jalen, uh, thunder and lightning combination there. And then you got a guy in Russell Wilson that's got a really good uh, uh, ball fake. He's got a great deep ball to work off of play action. Um, I kind of like where the Steelers' offense is at right now, and I think they're probably going to keep Najee around. Got one from Hervey Dunn. My man says, Jack, do you think we sweep the Bengals, clowns, and split with the Raptors? Honestly... I think I would I would if I have to guess right now, I'm gonna say Steelers sweep the Raptors because f the because f Baltimore. I think that they're actually more likely to split versus the Bengals. Now, obviously, the Ravens are a better team than the Bengals, but Joe Burrow has played very well against the Steelers in his career. Okay, um, I and, and Lamar Jackson has not. So if you just go based on um, previous career, uh, uh, you know, production. I think the Bengals and their offense, um, you know, could be very explosive. They're, you know, and that's they've been they've been explosive without T. Higgins on the field for much of this season. So I think Joe Burrow's playing about as good as any quarterback in football. He usually does well against the Steelers. So if I have to guess one team that the Steelers split with and then they sweep the other two, I say they sweep the Browns and Ravens and then they split with the Cincinnati Bengals. So predict it for me down there in the comments section. What will Pittsburgh's final record be this year? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. For me, guys, I think they probably get around somewhere between 11 and 13 wins. It depends how this division record goes, if they can, if, if, if the Browns can steal a game against the Steelers, etc. Um, I guess we'll have to see what happens here over the next several weeks, but make no mistake, I think this team is absolutely a playoff team. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks to everybody that submitted questions this week. Thank you to everybody that made it to the end of the video today. Uh, I'm slating this video to go out on Saturday. So the next time you guys will see me, I will be uh, with producer Coop for our live watch party starting at 12 p.m. Eastern time for week 11. Steelers versus Ravens, a big time matchup. If you guys want to hang out with over 100,000 Steelers fans in the largest YouTube watch party uh, for Steelers fans here on this platform, make sure you click that subscribe button right now.